Okay, theories on development. Uh, we talked a little bit about scientific method at this part in the textbook. So scientific me method, uh, you have a problem that's to be studied. You go out, you collect data, then you analyze the data, you draw conclusions from that data, and then you build a theory based off of those observations. That's the scientific method in a nutshell. Uh, with hypotheses, what you're doing is you are testing a specific assumption. It's a testable prediction. For example, let's say you, you think that boys are more physically aggressive on the playground compared to girls. That's a testable hypothesis. There are a million different ways to test that hypothesis that you have as far as how you would set up your IVs and DVs, your independent variables and your dependent variables. Some theories are they go along very well with scientific method like operant conditioning. There's lots of experimental data that you can go out and get. Some theories are a little more lacking on using the scientific method. Um, one that we talk about here that you've probably heard of already, uh, scientific, psych, sorry, psychoanalytical theories. Freud, Freudian thought. Uh, they describe development as primary, primarily unconscious and is something that is heavily colored by emotions, these unconscious emotions that you have. So yes, it's Freudian. It's kind of fallen out of favor for a couple different reasons, and one is that there's not a lot of support for it using the scientific method. Um, here are the Freudian stages, figure 1.5. I'm not going to go into them. I think they're kind of weird. Um, you may be interested in it. Don't, don't take my opinion on it. I'm, I'm not into them. But if you are and you think they're really interesting, you think there's good evidence for them, uh, you should look into them some more. And uh, we'll have some group projects at the end of the semester that you could actually go into this if you'd want to. For me, I d I'm not sure. I find them weird again. And there's just some, there's not as much scientific evidence for something like this compared to some of the other things that we'll talk about. Um, with Erickson, it's psychoanalytical theory as well. It is a little bit short on the scientific evidence, but um, a lot of counselors and clinicians will use it, so it does maybe possibly add something of value for at least the individual level and um, um, you know therapy, things of that nature. So I can kind of see at least discussing Erickson. Uh, we will go through these stages. There's eight different stages. In Erickson, we'll go through them as we go through each chapter. Um, right now, just so you know, basically, if you get caught in one of these stages and you don't pass, you know, onto the next one, that's where you're stuck out, according to Erickson and these researchers, for the rest of your life. So if you don't get past the identity versus um, inferior or industry versus inferiority, that's where you would be stuck out for the rest of your life. It's kind of interesting to me, anyways. Basically, what I just said there, evaluating psychoanalytical, hmm, I have problems saying that, psychoanalytical theories, um, lacking scientific support, too much emphasis on the sexual underpinnings. That's kind of the weird stuff I was talking about. An image of people that's too negative, maybe. Piaget, we will cover him quite a bit in some of the later, in like chapters three through, I think, eight or nine. The stages are all listed here if you want to take a closer look at those. Uh, again, we'll go through all of them later on. Figure 1.7 gives a nice little overview of them. A couple other theories that we'll talk about. Uh, Vygotsky, we'll talk about him. I, I like some of that stuff. We'll talk a little bit about information processing theory. We will talk about behavioral and social cognitive theories. So Skinner, hopefully you've heard of him. With Skinner and behavioral theories, there's no th thoughts. Thoughts don't really matter. Just what you can directly observe the person doing. That's the only thing that matters. And that also our learning is based on rewards and punishments. So for the behavioral theories and Skinner, that's all it is. Thoughts don't really matter. It's just behaviors and rewards and punishments. Going off of that, Bandura thought, well, maybe there's a little bit more to this. And so he is part of the social cognitive researchers. He has a, the idea of modeling. Um, the idea that what a kid sees in an adult it is some, a behavior that they might model and there's no necessarily rewards or punishments for modeling that adult. So it doesn't quite match up with Skinner's idea. So for example, the Bandura's um, Bobo the doll, you probably heard of this study, this idea that the kids watched adults beat on a doll and then they gave the doll to the kid and what did some of the kids do? They would beat on the doll because that's what they saw the adult doing. And so that's the idea of modeling. Some other theories you could look at. Uh, 
sorry, zoology, um, the idea of imprinting critical periods, the idea that you need to, um, again, like meet certain milestones with your relationships to other people at a certain time, a critical period, so that you develop properly. And then if it doesn't happen at that certain time, it won't happen. There's some research that says, well, maybe that's not exactly the case. But for the most part, yeah, I mean, it kind of makes sense. Uh, with Balby, he expanded on this, that the first year of life is crucial for the caregiver to bond with the child. And if it's positive and it's secure, good things will happen. And if you don't have a secure attachment to your caregiver, you have what's called an insecure attachment. Possibly bad things could um, have developed from that. So you take all these theories together, uh, Piaget, behavioral, social, cognitive, all these different theories, and you're like, well, which theory is best? What most people think nowadays is they call it an eclectic theory, basically a mix, mix and match of the different theories. You take the best parts from each theory and try to put them together. That um, no single theory of development is adequate to explain lifespan developmental. That's what the eclectic theory basically says. So you acknowledge the useful things in the theories that they offer. You try to take those good parts out of the various theories. All right, that's it for the theories in Lifespan Developmental. On the next slides, we'll get a little bit into research in Lifespan Developmental.